Hi, I'm Tim Marshall, and welcome to R&B Showcase Live, giving you the best in local, independent, and national recording artists. We have a very special guest today. He's a musician, composer, recording artist, and song stylist. Coming at you from Mobile, Alabama. Our special guest today is Mr. Van Williams Jr. Welcome to the show, Van. Man, I'm doing good, man. How are you? Now, your latest single, you are enough. Is this from your current album? Or is this from a new project? From a new one. Van, do you play all the instruments in your recordings? Yeah, well, uh, the piano, I play piano, guitar, and uh, the organ and stuff. But okay. So, would you say the church is uh, primarily where you got started, Van? Big time. I'm the baby of five, so my dad, both men, both my and uh, grandparents were ministers, uh, uncles, and. So I'm surrounded by it. Son of a preacher, man. You got it from both parents. You had no choice to do gospel music. I had no choice. So, um, but yeah, I definitely got my start. Um, I, I sung the first solo when I was three or four years old. And okay. uh, and it was uh, His Eyes on the Sparrow. Well, that's a great song. You're doing some professional performances out on the road now, right? Yeah, I, um, I'm i currently home right now. Um, just mm -hmm. kind of getting working on this album. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, but yeah, when I was, especially when I was in college, I was doing a lot of traveling. Okay. A group called Voices of Mobile. Now, Voices of Mobile was that kind of like a gospel vocal group? It was gospel. It's a it's a Baptist based college, and um, I was part of that one. And, and it was directed by uh, Dr. Roger Breland. He used to have a group of Truth, seventies mm -hmm. up to, and uh, he was the director of so. Like I said, I'm just trying to get back in the groove of getting back on the road. But right now, I'm just more so focusing on my album. Now, has COVID affected your performances? Yeah. <laughs> well, I know many musicians were like completely shut down. I know that, uh, you know, they're just now getting back on the road. And and uh, I noticed that I definitely want to be affected. And so you know, less shows, less concerts, less a lot of stuff, really. But. It's definitely affected, but at the same time, you know, the benefit of it was having more free time and a long time to really put thought to what I'm trying to do. It kind of gave birth to Zoom in terms of live performances and interviews. And uh, speaking of which, when folks come to see Van Williams Jr. live in concert, what can they expect to see? Is it uh, with a live band or do you use tracks? Most of the time it's a track, uh, depending on the band, really. Um, Cause I, I have you know, performed at weddings and different things like that. But nine times out of 10, it probably would be a track. Mm -hmm. Really kind of hard. From my area, it's kind of hard to get a group of musicians together. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody can have their own thing going on. But yeah, most of the tracks that I make. Okay. Now, do you have a do you have a live band that you use though? Any particular live band that you use? Or if you go out, would you, okay, so do you play? When you, do you perform, do you play keyboards or guitar? Okay. That's a good thing. That's a great thing. That's a great, great thing. So tell us about uh, some of the television shows you've done. I've seen you've been on a couple of different things uh, that you posted up on YouTube. We've been on uh, the Fox, I think Fox Channel, was it? or Fox 10, a uh, mm -hmm. show called Studio 10. Okay, Fox Studio 10. Uh, been on there a few times. I'm actually in the works of talking to uh, one of the producers about coming back on as mm -hmm. well. This uh, new single I'm putting out. And, okay. Uh, so kind of been, I kind of got my foot in the door a little bit without. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're on R&B Showcase TV, so you get to be on our show too. But <laughs> And you were on the Pepsi set. Was the Pepsi sound stage? Was that another performance that you yeah, did? Studio 10. Okay. And I saw you doing some, a couple of things with doing the Temptations uh, with a couple of, uh, I guess, people from your school, I believe that was. The five guys up on stage. You said my girl. Yeah, that was when I was at University Mobile. We, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that was fun. And uh, you the talent show, huh? We, we want it. And, okay. And uh, I got the, those other guys, group that we were all in the Voice of Mobile together. And okay. uh, they encouraged me to do it. I wasn't going to do it because mm -hmm. I've never done a talent show. And so, right. but yeah, they pushed me to do it. And the first thing came to mind, of course, was Temptations because everybody knows, mm -hmm. knows me how big of a fan I am of the time. Right. And uh, so, yeah, I. It was a fun process of trying to teach them the dance moves. Okay. Uh, they did they did good though. They did good. Yeah. You know, you know, you kept it basic and just, you know, 
didn't try to overdo it, but it was just enough to do it. It looked good. It was, you know, it looked professional. The musicians definitely, musicians definitely helped. We were all friends. Man. That's they, a good thing. I had to, you know, teach them their parts and then teach the singers uh, their dance moves and their parts. So it was harmonies, yeah. Funny. So you arrange, you do a lot of vocal arrangements. You talk about teaching harmonies and things. So where does this all come from? How did you how did you develop this talent to you know for music? It's really, you I know, mean, outside of me being, like I said, my, I have two older brothers. So my older sister, she's into poetry. So that kind of started me with uh, songwriting. Mm -hmm. And older two brothers, two older brothers, I mean, they're both musicians. And okay. Uh, and I have my sister that's right above me. She is the reason. She's the reason why I love the Temptations so much. She brought the movie about okay. uh, thousand. And since then, I was immediately hooked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so I was just basically a sponge, looking at everybody, all my other siblings, aunt, aunts and uncles, and my parents, and been different churches, looking at other groups and choirs, and I'm just, I was just a sponge, and it just stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely a desire that's been in, in me before I can even really remember. Mm -hmm. So. Well, it's great to be a young person and be into this music because you're actually bringing the sound and those qualities to to a current generation. Before we get off the subject, what was it like to meet Dr. Otis Williams in person and sing that song, um, I Could Never Love Another After Loving You? I mean, tell us about that experience, man. I was n <laughs> so nervous. <laughs> he described, he noticed on that, uh, I paused right before I started singing uh -huh. uh, because I, I can't get the words up. Mm. <laughs> I literally froze up, and uh, uh -huh. but it was it was a dream come true, man. Because this was a guy, this is a guy that I literally looked up to. Not just him, but the other guys that you know passed on, but more so him. My whole life, because I used to get in trouble. I mean, when I was in elementary school, middle school, for imitating the temptations in the classroom, mm -hmm. you know. I used to get in trouble all the time. I used to get teased, you know, but well, you're such an old man, you know, why you this and this? Because that's how much I love the temptation. So I've been going to the concerts for, as far as I can remember, they were coming to Biloxi, Mississippi, which is probably an hour from me. And my parents used to always take me in. So this one particular day, we, I mean, I didn't come in. And I just happened to be at work one day. I looked online on um, Ticketmaster, just see, let me just see what some with that tour is. And the next day I seen that luckily I didn't have nothing planned, so I said, I'm just gonna go. And uh, that drama, Aaron, Derek, he's the um, guy that got me on there. And when I was oh, it was like a dream, like mm -hmm. a, it was real blurry in the right. moment. <laughs> but yeah, he, uh, he talked, he encouraged me to keep going and inspired me to keep doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Well, you should because you, you have a unique gift, a unique, a unique talent. I mean, being a musician, a songwriter, and then a song stylist. I mean, I was listening to your interpretation of Sam Cooke's A Change Is Gonna Come, and it's a very inspirational uh, song. Is, is Sam one of your influences? He is the, I would say number one, but um, some say is always one, but he is the, <laughs> him, uh, Sam Cooke, Temptations, all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, um. I hear some got, Gerald Austin in your voice too from the Manhattan. You sound something like him, you know. Gerald too. I tie I tie him right there with Sam because they are so similar. Yeah, they are. Very similar. Uh, and a gospel name, a uh, gospel artist. He just passed a few years ago named Ransom, Bishop Ransom Allen. He was okay. Those three of were always uh, main inspirations growing up. Sam alone, you know, he's not too flashy, not too. Not jumping around on the stage or anything, he just snap flat foot and he can sing. And says, Ooh. So. Yeah, so well, I want to talk about your your arrangement of the tune because you have a very different interpretation of the tune. I mean, you don't just sing it exactly like Sam Cooke, you have you do it your own way. How does where does that come from and where do you get this inspiration to to arrange or your arrangement abilities? Well, I truthfully took that ending arrangement from Aretha Franklin, which is another one of my favorites. 
You know, I was just going to say something about Aretha because Aretha is one of those artists that never sings a song the same way twice. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like say somebody like Whitney Houston can go and perform a song and it'll do it exactly the same thing, way, note for note. Aretha Franklin never sings it the same way twice. Oh, and that's, and I, that's, you know, I love just, that. Yeah, that's what I love about it. You know, she just make, makes it up on the spot and just does it and goes with the feeling of it, you know. And singers have their own ways of interpretation. You know, not, I can't say one's better than the other, but. Jeff, you took the words right out of my mouth. Aretha Franklin is a, is a perfect example of an artist that does that. But you have that too. Well, I try. I try to uh, in the. I try to have my try to find my own niche, so to say. Mm -hmm. and, you know, outside of the people that I mean, I mean Temps and and uh, so many others, really, by naming them. But I try to find who is you know who is Van. What mm -hmm. what. If someone could on cut on the radio and hear my voice, they can auto, I want them automatically to say, okay, that's Van. Mm -hmm. Just like here, uh we know when we hear Marvin Gaye or we know when we hear Al Green or mm -hmm. anybody at that. And Luther Vandross, yeah. Mm -hmm. Vandross, that's what I was trying to say, Luther Vandross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> that's pretty much it though. I just I'm trying to, you know, and with the with the help of all of my inspirations, but Sam is definitely <laughs> I kind of pattern my vocal after I offer him a little bit. Mm -hmm. Certain runs he would do, certain riffs or certain how he hit certain notes or pull back or reach up or go, you know, certain things. I, I really studied the voice. Mm -hmm. So, Well, speaking of voices, you have an incredible range. I mean, you can sound like Sam Cooke, but I also heard you do that at Eddie Kendricks and Glenn Leonard. Tell us about this. I mean, where does the falsetto come from, man? You covering up from A to you know A to Z. I know. <laughs> but see, <laughs> growing up, and it's gonna we'll go back to the again. I keep bringing them up. That's growing right. up, good inspiration. And me and my brothers, uh, we used to every day after school. We used to uh, after we do our school, we're home. Used to put the movie on and imitate the attempts. Mm -hmm. And the movie to the end, every scene we knew every word to it. And by me being the young, I was always Eddie because my voice okay. was. Uh -huh. And of course, as years went by, my voice changed, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then I started to kind of hit the, the Melvin part because my voice is low now. Okay. But I just always kind of kept that falsetto kind of as sharp as I can. Because mm -hmm. I truly enjoy singing so for some reason. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But Do you have a preference of styles or you just like to sing at all? Do you have a preference? Music-wise? No, I mean, as far as your singing style, I mean, like some people were just like, I'm a tenor, I'm a baritone, I'm a bass. Or baritone. do you just like singing at all? Baritone? Baritone. <laughs> because I can, it's easier to, certain, and I write my songs on purpose now, more so in my lower baritone voice, so it'll be easier to shift up to that high tenor if I need to or want without straining or losing my Okay. Old song up there. I like to right. blow it around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I heard you do Silent Night also. It's the sound of something like that, something like Glenn, you know? Yeah. I love I love that song. So I love Glenn. Um, and then Two Sides of Love uh, for the Temptations was another one. You did a good job with both songs, both songs, man, you know.
That's why I say temptations because all of them really, but it, it right. is that he he was moved to, and that's always been one of my favorite songs. Yeah, but I'm surprised you picked that because most people would have picked just an imagination or something like that. But you picked one of those good classic, uh, I guess, was it a B side, I believe, or an album track from one of their albums to do. So that was a good thing to do. It's nice to pick different things, you know, to hear and and you know. I mean, because we always, as we know. Um, just my imagination and get ready and ain't surprised mm -hmm. my girl of course but i'm such a fan so i literally like all of their songs mm -hmm. and that has always been one of my favorites that one in born to love you and i love that man that's a great song and and uh so many others but i like all the songs a lot of people don't really listen to mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i'm the same way so he ever did ever had any desire to sing with a like he, i know your soul sing ever had a desire to sing with a group I would, I would, I would love to. You know, um, you know, somebody might come knocking at your door, you know. Well, <laughs> you ready when they call? <laughs> yeah. So Mobile, Alabama. Now is that he can or is he from Alabama? He's from Alabama, isn't he? Birmingham originally. Birmingham, yeah. yeah. I found is out there something in the water in Alabama that makes great singers, or what? <laughs> <laughs> I get. I mean, if you want to say that, I guess. But <laughs> good answer. <laughs> But um, I just found out that Melvin was from here. Oh, okay. I didn't he know that. Born here. Uh, him and his mom, Miss uh, Rose, mm -hmm. uh, he was like five or six and went to Detroit. Okay. Did yeah, I have some family uh, that I actually ran into? Because like I said, the host, everybody knows me. But mm -hmm. I, yeah, I just found out that he was from here. So, and uh, so from him. Okay. And David C. I don't know if you know David C. I think he's from from Alabama, Birmingham. You know, from the Temptations Review. Yeah, basically, the more all the all the Temptations from Birmingham. wasn't Paul. It wasn't Paul from from Alabama, Birmingham. Or? Paul, Dennis, David C. Uh, Harry, mm -hmm. uh, probably somebody else. But I know David's not too far. Uh -huh. Meridian. Oh yeah, Meridian, Meridian, Mississippi, right? Yeah. That's, That's not a good thing. No. Yeah, it's all that Southern soul. And um, this, now there's some record labels in that area. Have you ever tried Echo Records, any of those uh, labels that are looking for talent? Yeah, uh, we used to have them when I was a kid called uh, Integrity. 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 But they closed Okay. Okay. Um, the closest one to me is uh, Malico. Oh, okay. Are they but still, I, I don't know if they're still active. Are they still active? Okay. As big as they were. Mm -hmm. I think Johnny Taylor was on that label too. Bobby, Bobby uh, Blue, Blue, Blue Bland, and yeah. so many others. But yeah, How about Bobby Womack, you familiar with his his music? If you think you're now waiting to yeah, that one and looking for love and looking for uh, love. Back when he was with the Valentine, too. Yes, we have the great knowledge of music, man. I'm very impressed. You know, like I said, for a young person. To bring that to the next generation, that's it's awesome, awesome. So let's talk about your your uh, album, now. Soulful Experience. Is this one of your most recent albums or current projects? Yeah, that was last year. That was just strictly a base base gospel kind of album. Uh, okay. Uh, this next one I'm working on is I wouldn't like. I really don't know what it would be considered as in the out there, but it's more so of like a motivational type of album. Mm -hmm. that's that's the area I'm trying to go towards right now mm -hmm. so what type style of music will you mostly be on this new album that you're doing 
Um, well, the style of it would be definitely like R and B ish or soul or soulful. I mean, uh, definitely have a little touch of gospel feel to it. Mm -hmm. But I really want to kind of create different all types of stuff, like maybe a country country type or okay. a blue. Uh, it just because I'm because I like I like all so okay. I just want to put a touch like some classical or something or some jazz. Okay. Yeah, well, how you just be throwing stuff up there and it all comes out to a masterpiece, so to say. So that's kind of mm -hmm. kind of happening. All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna um, end the show with one of your performances that you're gonna do for us here today. Tell us about the song "You Are Enough." You are enough is a song that I wrote not just for everybody, for myself as well. Uh, we all, of course, face hard times and different sometimes and uh you know d depressions and all kinds of stuff but i lately have been kind of getting overwhelmed and tired and i i don't want to say that in a wrong way of getting on social media um i have a big heart so to say so i kind of have I, I get tired of seeing young people my who was that yeah like i i see it so much we just had someone in my city uh, two weeks ago. She had every, you know, everything you can really think of uh, that we know of, and you know, she took on life mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason. But so conversations I see, you know, people post on the social media pages, and I just kind of sit back and watch, and it just it just came. Out. No one really is truthfully, you know. Either you got just love music or violent type of money or sex or whatever. No one is really enough to encourage somebody else. Mm -hmm. So what pretty much it is, you know, I have a three year old daughter. Make sure I tell her that she's, hey, you're the prettiest girl in the world. You know, you know, you well, don't worry about what the folks say. You got it. What was inside of you mm -hmm. go to where you're trying to go. Mm -hmm. So regardless of what people may say, just you remember you are whatever. You want to do all right we're about ready to give you that grand introduction performing this latest single you are enough our special guest van williams jr you can let people determine who you are you were created by the same hands they created the earth moon and stars everything he created he said it was good And whether you know it or not That means you are too So the next time you feel worthless I'll just remember that You are enough And you could be good you are
Tim Marshall on the R&B Showcase, our very special guest, Van Williams Jr. That was his latest single, You Are Enough. I understand that you're doing all the arrangements on the album and the vocal harmonies. Now, if folks want to get in touch with you in regards to your music or live performances, how can folks reach out to Van Williams Jr.? Email. Always find me on Facebook, too, Van Williams Jr. Or um, my Instagram is Van underscore Williams 93. Uh... Email Van Williams Jr. Jr. at gmail dot com, and uh, also subscribe to my YouTube too. Again, I thank you for being our special guest via Zoom here on the R and B Showcase Television Show. Our special guest, musician, recording artist, and entertainer, song stylist, and composer Van Williams Jr. Be on the lookout for his current projects. I'm Tim Marshall, and thank you for joining us for R and B Showcase Live. <laughs> All the likes and comments other people may get And let they determine whether their opinions are important If there was no social media then how would you feel? How would you feel? About yourself you need to make sure that your love is real Because when no one else shows you any love You need to make sure that you always show yourself some love So don't let that media get you down Smile and throw away that frown. Oh, oh. Don't worry about what people say, just love yourself. Be true to who you wanna be, just love yourself. They are always gonna judge you, just love yourself. You're beautiful on the inside out. You need to understand your self worth. Start putting yourself up